thank you very much for the introduction and uh, welcome everyone, I will also say. Uh, as you heard, I'm from the Department of Dental Medicine and I'm involved in, in teaching and research in orofacial pain. And I have a little interest in sex differences, this is, this is why I have this title. And I posed a question for you here, as you can see, do women have more pain than men? And I'm going to try to, to respond to this question to you and um, uh, we'll see what we end up with. So, the first, uh, the clinical situation. How, how does it look uh, in the clinical situation? I have listed some pain disorders you can see here um, in the list. And we have the signs for, this, for the males and the females there. And um, so I was going to ask you actually, if anybody has an idea, what is the, what is the uh, uh, prevalence of, uh, in percent then, uh, of uh, males and females in a disorder like fibromyalgia? Do you know fibromyalgia? <laughs> Yes. What do you think? How many, how many women go there in one man, in the man, so to say? Ten to, Ten to one. Ten to one, yeah, a little bit too much maybe. It's, uh, yeah, not that, but pretty much the same. Depends on, of course, how we, where you put the question, if you put it in, in the population or if you put it in the clinic or so. Bony mouth syndrome is something that uh, we see uh, in the orofacial pain clinic, uh, clinics where you have burning sensation in your mouth. What do you think about that? Is less or it's more? More? No, it's less. But it's about three women in, in one man. And we can scroll down here. We have temporomandibular disorders, which we work a lot with also. Uh, there's about two to three uh, females to one ma man here. And you, now you can see, think that you can see that this is some kind of list that goes down here. So for neuropathic pain, uh, it's about um, a little bit mo more common in females, but not. Not, not such a big difference anymore. And if we go down to low back pain, it's decreasing even more. And then if you go to cancer pain, there's no sex difference. It's, just the, the, it's the same number of, of females and males that have this. And if we turn then to Horton's headache, which is a really uh, con severe condition in men, preferably in men. So um, to summarize this, you can say it's a conclusion from the clinical side. Uh, women are in the majority of most of, of the chronic pain disorders. And we know from studies that women report more pains, more severe pain, pain of longer duration, more frequent pain, and uh, something more, pain in more anatomical locations also. So now the lecture is over because now I've already told you that women uh, are in more pain than men. But the question is, of course, why is this? Uh, can we learn anything from the experimental part? I mean, do ex human experiment, uh, does they tell you why this is so? Well, we can of course test different things in, 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 in the, in the ex uh, uh, human experimentally. Uh, for example, if, if we uh, 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 apply a stimulus to a man and a woman, exactly the same stimuli, will they perceive this with the same intensity? That's one question you can ask. So, do, we, do they perceive pain uh, as the same? Or is it uh, that uh, women are more sensitive to this? Are they more sensitive to pain? We talk about pain thresholds, and we come back to this. And do they tolerate pain less? These are things that we can test in, in the laboratory. So let's go and see what we can find from these studies. Uh, this is uh, one way of testing this. You can inject something that is painful we have done that quite a lot in our lab. Um, we inject in the masseter muscle, which is one of the, oops, sorry, the jaw muscles. And then we ask the subjects to rate the intensity of the pain. And these are two examples. Uh, the one to the left, it's uh, uh, glutamate that has been injected into the masseter muscle. It wasn't done by us. Another lab in, in Denmark did this. And um, let's see if I can take the right one here. Uh, you see here uh, the pain intensity on a 0 to 10 VAR scale, and there are some times here, and they inject it here, and then we have the women and we have the men. And you can see that the women have a higher intensity than the men, and also a longer duration. Uh, when I did my thesis quite long ago, we injected serotonin into the masseter muscles, and we didn't really look for sex differences in that study, but I've done that afterwards, so check the data I have. And you can see that's pretty much the same story. 
So uh, it's much higher pain intensity in the women than it is in the men. Uh, another way of looking at this is to, to, to inject something and you can see how, how it spread um, uh, within the tissue then or the pain spread. And in this study we injected hypertonic saline which is just a stronger saline solution which is quite painful as you will see or no you won't see that but you see the spread here. <laughs> and uh, you can see the, the women are the red quite traditionally and uh, the blue are the men. And uh, you can see, clearly see that the pain area is much more localized where we have the injection in the men, where it's much more spread in the women here. And in fact, if you calculate the total area here, it's twice as large in the women than it is in the men. So the next question. So then we can say that this is so probably that we inject something, it gets a higher pain intensity in the women. But are they less uh, sensitive to pain? We can use this device called the algometer to add the pressure here. And at a certain point when you increase the pressure, this will give rise to some pain. And uh, we have done this and others have done this in several studies. And uh, we've measured the pressure pain threshold. We have uh, different muscles here. The masseter, the temporalis, frontalis, trapezius and the tibialis anterior in the lower leg. And you can see that uh, that is actually uh, lower thresholds here in the females for all these muscles, although the, it was only significant here in these uh, facial muscles uh, in this particular study. It's quite a small study. Uh, another way that another lab looked at, they looked at the electrical pain threshold and they applied uh, this stimuli over the mental foramen here, some electrical stimuli. And then the uh, service were asked to rate the pain intensity. And you can see it's pretty much, much the same story here, that the, the, the threshold is much lower, significantly lower in the women than it was in the men. What you also can see is when they have uh, increased the stimuli intensity here, that at all different intensity have used, the females are uh, ha reporting higher pain intensity at all. So they are a more left shifted curve here. So the final question then is, uh, do women tolerate pain less well? Well, you wouldn't think so because you always say that uh, the women we give birth to children, of course, is one of the most painful experiences you can have. But we should test this in the laboratory then. And one way of testing this is to test uh, the cold pain tolerance. In this experiment, uh, the subject is asked to put the hand into ice cold water and to, to rate the pain intensity or keep it as long as they can until they have to take it out because of the pain is too unbearable. So uh, let's see what, what happens if you do this kind of experiment. Well, the men can have the hand much longer in the water than the, or significantly longer at least than the, than the women had. So it's pretty much, you can see the same here for all these different questions. And if you summarize this, which uh, was done quite, quite recently uh, by a group in, in the US, you can see this is the heat pain threshold, heat pain tolerance, ischemic pain threshold, tolerance, cold pressure, threshold and, and tolerance, and pressure pain threshold for different muscles here. You can see that this is the difference between the men and the women. For all these modalities, women, rate is as much more painful than, than the ma men did. So to summarize this from the experimental part then, women are more sensitive to experimental pain than men and this is especially, as some studies show, than regarding electrical and thermal stimulation. And this is independent of the anatomical location, it doesn't matter if you do the experiment in the face or if you do it in the leg, you get the, the, the same story so to say. And the differences are, are the greatest for methods that induce a deep tonic pain in, in the subjects. So, we need to try to see if we can explain this. And the first thing I would like to, to give you attention to is then the definition of pain according to the International Association for the Study of Pain. And it says, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience which is associated with actual or potential tissue damage, damage or described in terms of such damage. And this means that, that pain then is uh, influenced by a lot of different factors or things like the biology of, of the subject, of course, psychosocial factors, 
and behavioral factors. So I should dig a little bit deeper into such uh, factors now and we can see what, what we can learn from this. So we start with the biological factors. I will show you some examples from genetic factors, if sex hormones are in, involved, and some different central, central processing of pain, uh, or if they are different between men and women. So if you start with the sex and gene interaction, you can start with the rat study here, which is quite interesting. In this study, they had three different types of rats. Um, and the rats, they put their tail into hot water and they measure the time until the tail comes out of the water because it's too painful for, probably then for, for the rat. And when it was, this was done in this experiment, they found sex differences, you can see. So uh, here in this strain of the Long Evans rats, there was a lower, a shorter time for the, for the female rats but it was totally the opposite for the Spadoli rats, where the women, or the women, when the females could have the tail a lot longer in, in the hot water bath, whereas for the Wistar rats there were no differences. So some, some, this tells us a little bit that there may, might be some genetic uh, uh, influence on, on the pain sensitivity. Uh, we have recently done a study where we checked a, a certain uh, genotype in the serotonin receptor 3A. And um, we checked uh, with this uh, method with injecting hypertonic saline into the masseter muscle and how they perceive the pain. And we found that um, when we divided them into different single nuclear polymorphisms here, where they had different uh, base pairs here or uh, changes. So you can see that those who were carriers in the C allele here, then that was a significant difference between uh, the men and the women for the pain area, but those who were carrying the other alias, there were no significant differences. And we found some other also similar differences in this material. So it tells you that it, the genes actually influence on this. How about sex hormones? Uh, if we check TMD, which is, as I said, uh, pain conditions with the temperament, the blood joints and your muscles, and we follow this throughout life. We know that in very small children, they can have TMD. It's not very common, but they can ha have it. But there's no sex differences. They perceive it as this, I mean, it's the same number of women, females and males. They're starting to appear when you become teenagers. And then when you are young adults and when you're older adults, there are sex differences with women uh, in the majority then, as I showed you before. And then you can, of course, think about what happens when you are uh, a teenager. Well, of course, you have all the sex hormones in your body, body that's floating around and doing things with you. And this is another st study where they uh, had patients with TMD pain who were asked to rate the pain intensity every day for three months, and they averaged this then. And if we can start with the men with the TMD here, you can see that it doesn't really matter which day you ask them to, to ask for their pain intensity. This is the worst pain and this is the average pain. It's pretty much a straight line. But if you look at the women, it's a totally different curve. So it's a high pay, higher pain intensity in the early phase of the uh, follicular phase here, of the menstruation phase, and then it uh, de uh, decreases down to the ovulation. It's a little top here and then it goes down again and up again. And you need to think about why is this? And if you then add the estrian levels here to this and to superimpose them, you can see that they're mirroring each other perfectly here. So when estrian is high, pain is low and vice versa. So it shows us that, of course, sex hormones have something to do with this also. So it's starting to get a bit complicated. And we know also from studies that experimental pain also varies across the menstrual cycle. How about central processing then? In this study, which is quite interesting, quite old as you see, this is this from 1998, uh, where they applied a, a heat stimulus on the arm, lower arm, same in, in the women and the men, and then they made a PET scan on the brain, what happens in the brain. And you can see the same stimulus activates much larger area here in the women than it did in the men. More intense and a larger area. And uh, this, as I said, was with heat, but it has also been shown with 
a method of inducing pain by rectal distension, where you put a balloon into the rectum and you pump it up, and it's quite painful. And similar findings have been shown with that method. Uh, a quite recent study uh, found that there could also be a, a possible uh, lateralization of, of pain pr processing in the prefrontal cortex, so that men actually had the activation on the contralateral side, whereas the women had it on the ipsilateral side. So there are some differences in how we process pain in, in, in the brain. Um, so, so it's quite interesting. Another way of looking at central processes is to look at wind-up. And wind-up is uh, something that happens in, 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 the, in the central nervous system if you, when you apply a stimulus in the periphery. If you apply one stimulus that is painful, you get some kind of pain response. But if you do this repeatedly with quite short uh, inter in the, uh, distance between the stimulus here, you get a much larger and longer pain, pain uh, intensity. And this was then done in, in have been done in some studies, but in this study they applied uh, then heat again and they measured them uh, for the first stimuli, the five, fifth, ten, and so on. And you can see at all these uh, times or after uh, this number of stimuli has been applied, there is a higher pain intensity in, in the women than it is in the men. Uh, see if it was ah, something. Yeah. And uh, we can also look at the pain inhibition. Uh, as soon as you have something going on in, in that's painful, you start to activate your uh, pain inhibitory pathways. And one way of testing this is to test conditioned pain modulation. You can do this the same as I showed you with a cold water bath, but then you, uh, you, the pain you measure is some other part of the body. So you put your hand in the water, but I measure the pain intensity, for example, in, in the face. And uh, as you can see here in this graph here, uh, the blue is at baseline. This is before they put the, the, the hand into ice cold water. And you can see uh, then, then when you put your hand into the water uh, that the, the pain intensity goes down uh, in the women, but it doesn't go down, uh, in the men, but it doesn't go down in, in the women. And this has been shown for several different uh, time modalities of, of um, uh, giving pain or applying pain, as you can see here. Uh, we, in another study, looked at the uh, uh, sex and uh, uh, hormone interaction with this cold pressure mod modulation across the menstrual cycle in healthy uh, women. And we could find here that when you do this cold pressure uh, test during uh, the early follicular phase, the pain intensity is higher than if you do it during the ovulation. So it decreases when you are high in estrian, as I told you before. Uh, it was quite an uh, interesting study to perform, very difficult, because we actually tested that they were in, in the ovula ovulation part here uh, in the face by taking blood samples. So we knew, knew that they, this was really the ovulatory phase in these uh, women. OK go on to psychological factors. We have a lot of those that could influence the pain also, such like depression, anxiety, stress, and catastrophizing. Show you some examples here. Uh, this is from an article in, in, uh, in uh, some of the newspapers. Uh, I don't know which one it was, Aftonbladet, I think. And it's based on, on the study from Statistics Sweden, where they um, had interviewed a lot of women in Sweden, and found that about 25% of all women, adult women, but only 14% of the men report that they are worried and anxious. So this is more common in, in women than it is in men. And in, in this particular study, I was seen that younger women are particularly more vulnerable, uh, so even higher figure for, for those. Side. So, so something going on here that is different between the men that could also influence on, this, on the pain response. And uh, it's actually the same if you look at uh, stress. Uh, we can go to, to, to animal studies and look at uh, the stress-induced analgesia in female rats, where you then usually you put the, the rat into water bath and they should swim. And this is really stressful for, for the rat to try to find the ground where you can, can walk again. It's not that have to swim in. And, um, so you can see that this is, doesn't work as well in, in, in the female rats as it does in, in the male rats. 
And we know from, from human studies that women release less cortisol after experimental stress than men do, as you can see in, in this uh, quite old study, but still it's, it's uh, valid results, of course. So you can see that the stress level, cortisol, is, is then much higher here in the men than it is in, in the uh, women. So it's, uh, yeah, it's not easy. This is pretty much the same story with catastrophizing, you know, how, how um, the thing that you try to, do, um, what do you say, when, when you make everything much worse than it is, you, if, if you have some pain, you believe, okay, I'm going to die tomorrow, so this is a simple way of, of explaining this. And studies have shown that women are more uh, prone to catastrophize than men are. And, uh, and when you have tested this also, you found that in women that are high catastrophizes, they have a greater temporal summation pain. So the more you catastrophize, uh, the, the more pain you get, you can say. And you can see this from this graph here, where you have the low catastrophizes here and the high here. Both are then women, but we know that women are more prone, as I said before. So the final thing then is, of course, uh, sociocultural socio factors that will also influence on your pain response. Uh, for example, factors like health care seeking, gender role expectations, pain coping, and pain report. And I will also show you some examples from this. Um, I told you the first slide uh, that TMD had a prevalence of two to three women in one man. What do you think about uh, those that we see in the specialist clinic? Are there more women coming or are there less women coming in, in re relation to the men? Well, I think you should guess that it was actually more. So those that come to the clinic are four times as many uh, women than men, but if you ask in the, in the population, it's only twice as many women than men. So there's something to do also that women are more prone to go to the physician to take care of the body, maybe. And there is also a lot of studies show, showing this. Uh, this is also this thing about gender roles. What do you say? Who do you think has the highest pain threshold? If you think about stereotypes, <laughs> the one to the left, well, I would also have guessed so, and guess that, of course, this has also been shown in experimental studies that uh, uh, when you ask the person to rate their own masculinity, they asked here. So there's actually the person himself who said, uh, on a scale, how masculine are you, how feminine are you? And those who uh, rated that higher masculinity also had higher pain thresholds. So I think there's a lot in our gender also, what we are taught from, from when we are small children also. Also, how we cope with pain influences it. And many uh, psychological studies by psych psych psychologists have sh shown this, that women are more irritated about pain. We like to talk about it. We, ta we take also use more strategies to cope with the pain. We uh, don't only go to the pharmacy to buy the drugs. We also go to, to alternative medicine much more. We go to physiotherapists and so on, in much more than the men do. And we also use more social and emotional support. So, so these are differences also that, of course, influence on, on how many women we see in relation to men. Yeah, the same story. Uh, pain, uh, women are more uh, willing to report pain. And other studies have shown that the more willing you are to report pain, the lower the pain tolerance. Men are less, as I said, willing. They have than higher pain tolerance. Um, and also they have shown that men do not admit that they have pain because they think that this is embarrassing. And this is also, of course, in our gender roles that we are, have from, from early life. Uh, that we, we bring up our boy, boy children in another way than we do with the girl children, probably. So maybe I'm a little bit ahead of schedule here because this is actually my last. <laughs> My last time, because I think it's quite interesting experiment. Uh, it was done quite long ago, as you can see here. And this is uh, uh, the influence of the sex of the examiner. So if you do so, it's usually, you know, the, the, traditionally you have a male examiner and you have male participants. 
And this is how m much of, of uh, the studies done in ph pharmacology, for example, with the, or the drug studies are made in this way. And now people are understanding that men and women are not the same, and we need to have add females also in, in, in um, among our volunteers. But we also have to think about the sex of the examiner. So in, in this study, uh, they had a, a group of healthy men and healthy women. And they uh, were asked to do this cold pressure test. They would keep the hand into this ice cold water for three minutes and rate the pain intensity afterwards. And then they did this twice. First with the male examiner and then with the female examiner. And when they had the male examiner, uh, or both of them actually, were asked to emphasize, emphasize their gender role. So the, the, men, the man was asked to look like a real doctor with a white coat and tie, you know, and everything, and very masculine like this. And, and the female examiner was asked to have like makeup and high heel shoes and a skirt, like, like me, with a, even though I don't have any makeup today. <laughs> a little bit like this. And we should see what happens then with, when the subjects rate the pain intensity. So this is uh, where we have the male examiner. And this is what you can expect. Uh, there's a lower pain intensity in the men when it, than uh, compared to the women here. So they rate the pain much higher here or no, than the men did. So now comes the interesting part. What happens if we then use huh, something? Ah, a female e examiner? It's interesting. Look what happens here with the men. When there's, a, when there's a woman who is the examiner, it doesn't hurt as much suddenly. <laughs> it's interesting. Whereas there was no actually no difference here in the, in the, among the women. They were actually rating the same. There was no significant difference. So also, who is doing this experiment influence depending on which sex you are uh, making your experiment in, so to say. Okay, so to summarize this, uh, well, we know from the clinical situation I showed you in the beginning that women have more pains than men have. I showed clinically um, also animal experiments. I didn't have time to show you this today, but there's a lot of these animal experiments showing that we have it also in, in the mammals at least. And we have shown, I've shown you examples from the human uh, side, that human experimental side, that is the same story. And this is not a single uh, explanation to this, of course. It's a complex uh, story, and it de depends then on, on uh, many different diverse factors, like biological, psychological, and, and sociocultural factors. And finally, we have to say that even that we see these differences when you do these experiments and so, uh, these differences are small. Uh, the inter-individual differences between uh, different subjects are much greater. So. We have them, and you should consider them maybe when you do experiments and, and have both sexes in, in, in this, but you shouldn't um, overestimate the, the, the role, really. So, that was my story. Thanks so much for the attention. Thanks.